While you've written quite a few books, what inspires you to keep writing? I've always enjoyed creating tales. I ran a role-playing game, tabletop role-playing game, for many, many years, various campaigns, and I just have all these story ideas that I just keep thinking of. <laughs> I like to be able to put them to paper. And what did you use as the framework for your series? So the Art of the Crown series was based on a long-running tabletop role-playing game that I ran over the span of four years, I think it was. The earlier parts of the series are very similar to what happened in the campaign. As you get further along in the series, it's a little bit different from what happened in the game. And how about all the side stories? Are those really nothing to do with the original role-playing game? Yeah, they're all original stories. In some cases, they were cut content from other books, uh, and in other cases, they were brand new stories telling the background of where these various people came from. What do you mean by cut content? So, if I go to the first one of these, yes, which is Stories of the Past, there's a story in here called Beverly and the Bandit King, which is a story I had considered putting into the Sword of the Crown, but I didn't want to affect the pacing of Sword of the Crown. So, uh, so a, I mean, there's stories you cut out of the main books. Right, but I still uh. wanted to have that story told. So it's one of the stories in here. This is actually a collection of a whole bunch of different stories. And when do you think of the story idea? So when you outlined the 15 book series for Heir to the Crown, did you know you were going to do these side stories or these particular side stories? No. So what happened was I knew I wanted to do this one because I had this idea, I had tried something different, which I, I like trying to mix things up as I'm writing, give me challenges. Other ones, just the story sort of came to me as I was writing. For example, if I look at this one, Into the Forge, I had this generic idea that I wanted to do a story with one of the Dwarven characters, and I was writing book 10, and the story just came to me. Just the way things developed in that story fed very nicely into this. And so it changed the basic context of what this story is all about. Now, interestingly enough, two of your six side stories are about non-human races. And did you find that in writing those, it actually fleshed out the races for you? Yes, so for this one, I did a lot of work on the dwarves, what they call the mountain folk. I need to say three races, not three, two. Three races, yeah. Yes. I was going to say you missed one there. I did, in fact, miss the dwarves. <laughs> so yes, that was there. This one, which was, this one was a little earlier, this fills in details about orcs. Yes. And this one's interesting, actually, because this also grew out of an encounter from Sword of the Crown. Without giving the plot away, the main character in Sword of the Crown runs across a bunch of orcs, this explains how the orcs got there. So it fills in background it around that. Fills in a lot of the culture around the orcs as it well. It does too, too. It? and I didn't want to just have orcs be the typical evil orcs in most books. Mm -hmm. And then the most recent one, Spark of Chains, is about goblins. But once again, I didn't just want to have goblins be the stereotypical short green people. <laughs> well, mean, they are short and green. They are short and green. But I came up with what I think is a very interesting description of their culture that's, as far as I can tell, very different from other, other books and other sources. Well, especially how they raise the young, brutal. <laughs> it, yeah, it is. It's, a, it's really about one goblin who, because of his contact with humans, decides there's a better way for his people to live, hence the spark okay. of change. change. And how did you come up with that name? Do you remember? No. <laughs> <laughs> you asked people in your newsletter to suggest a name. Oh yes, that's right. Uh, we did. We used the newsletter for lots of things. In fact, the entire world of Idenworth that this takes place in, the name Idenworth, was from a survey we did. It was actually combining two different names. Yeah, two different names. 